The subject of the khutbah today is the 17th ayah of Surah Luqman. This is again continuing Luqman radiallahu anhu's advice to his son. And this is where we get to probably the, the heart of the matter. Everything up until now was built up to this. These few concluding ayat are actually, I consider them the juiciest part of this conversation. This is the most real part of the conversation. He says, Ya Bunayya, my beloved son, my young son, my little boy, aqimis salata, establish the prayer. They commonly translate that as establish the prayer. Let me tell you something about iqama. Iqama in Arabic comes from the word qiyam. And qiyam means to stand. And when you put it as iqama, this is from the if'al family, what that does is, it's to make something else stand. So if somebody was building a tower, they made the bricks stand on top of each other and they built a tower, right? So they did iqama of a building. That's the iqama of a building. To make it erect, to make it stand. Iqama to salah, we use these words, establish the prayer, establish the prayer. What in the world does establish the prayer mean? One of the ways you can think about that is, preserve the prayer. Make sure it stays standing. When you do iqama of something, it's as if you put a pole or a pillar in the ground and you make sure you keep checking on it that it doesn't what? It doesn't lean, right? You keep maintaining it. So you're maintaining the prayer and preserving the prayer. That's actually within the meaning of iqamat salah So Allah didn't just say pray. And he's, the, the father is not telling his son, pray. He's saying preserve the prayer, maintain the prayer. You know what that means? That means the prayer is something that can get damaged very easily. Because when something is delicate, and it can get damaged easily, then it needs to be maintained and it needs to be preserved. Like a delicate plant, you have to make sure, some plants, you know, they can't stand on their own. So you have to put a stick in the ground, the trellis, and it wraps around the, the stick. And you have to keep checking on it. Because if the winds were too high, or the sun was too harsh, the plant might burn out, right? So th this tarbiya of the plant, this making sure that it grows, making sure that it's preserved and taken care of, that's the kind of thing you have to do with prayer. There are some things we have in our life that don't require that kind of care. So if you have a car, for example, you don't have to change its oil for a while, and it's running and doesn't matter. And sometimes people don't take care of it for a long time until they find out that it's falling apart, right? There are other things you have to check on them constantly, and if you don't, it's not gonna last. Like ice, for example. If you needed ice for something, you have a limited amount of time. And if it's starting to melt, you have to put it back in the freezer again. Because if you don't maintain the temperature, it's gonna melt away, right? By using the word aqib, what Allah is teaching us, and what the father is teaching his son, is it's not just enough that you pray. Because you could have like a busted, broken down building called prayer and you just kind of got it over with. And that was your prayer. And your parents can come and say, did you pray? Yeah, I'll pray. I'll pray. You pray Maghrib? Yep. And when you, when you actually secretly record your son or daughter praying, you find out that that looks more like a you know, cardiovascular exercise than it looks like prayer. Because the rukur was done in light speed. And the sajda looked more like a bird pecking the ground than a sajda. Why? Because the prayer was just something you get it over with. You ever see people, like a friend of mine loves cars. He's always fixing cars. And what does he do? He's constantly looking inside the engine. Man, that, that part's getting a little rusty. I need to lube this part up. I need to loosen this up. I need to fix this. I need to fix that. Well, car's perfect, man. No, no, no. You don't understand. It's at a different level, isn't it? When you have love of preserving and protecting something, then you're constantly fixing, fixing, fixing. There are people that are fixated on the inner decor of their home. Or people that are really into gardening, checking on every flower. Oh, this one's getting a little weak. There's a delicate care that goes into it. There are some of you, you know, kids, I'm telling you about gardening. Or I'm telling you about taking care of the car. You can't relate to that. But if I tell you about things, your collection, your collection of whatever, cards, your collection of certain kinds of toys. And my, who touched my collection? Who touched my shoes? Some people have shoes that are like, they keep them like they belong at a museum on display, right? And my left shoe is slightly a little bit too much to the left. Who touched it? Right? Because you're, you want to preserve it perfectly. You want to look at it, just looking at it makes you happy. Well, you know what? The prayer... The father's giving the son advice is something you have to go out of your way to preserve. 
And if you don't preserve it, it's going to fall apart. And it's going to be like, here's the analogy, it's going to be like a tree that looks like a tree, but it's just a hollow bark. There's nothing inside. A tree that's a full tree, a car could run into it. The tree's not going to tip over. The car is going to be destroyed, right? But if a tree's hollow on the inside and a car smashes into it, what's going to fall apart? The tree's going to fall apart because there's nothing inside. It looked like a tree, but it wasn't one. Well, what the prayer does is it actually fills you on the inside. It strengthens you and me on the inside. But it won't do that if we don't maintain it. If we don't maintain it.